Well, lovely. I uh, just finished filming this lecture, and somehow I had managed to hit pause within the first two minutes of my 50 minutes of ranting. <laughs> it was a good lecture. I really had the voice, the mannerisms, the excitement going. I, I'm drained. <laughs> I drew all this stuff, and anyway, we're going to do it again, and I hope I can give you the same enthusiasm I had. I brought myself a soda, and I'm ready to do this again. <sighs> okay, we're going to do a quick chapter that this video is the entire chapter. You need to know it for the test. In fact, you may need to know it for any quizzes. Um, but uh, basically, um, there's not going to be any problems or anything. This is theory. It's about how our minds work, consumer decision making. Most of the time, whoa, that doesn't work. Marginal utility. Just look that up in the index in the back and find the pages where it's discussed. And um, that'll be the chapter, basically. Um, consumer decision making. Um, there's quite a few different names authors use for this chapter. But it's theoretical, but it's how our minds work. And it's part of your... Um, uh, a lot of times it shows up on your exit exam this this concept so this is quick we'll get through it and in class we'll we'll go on to another chapter okay but for now marginal utility now we use the term marginal utility um, instead of of uh, writing that out we use the term mu and I said marginal utility as I looked at the letters mu <laughs> we use the term mu for marginal utility um, and I look at MU and I see marginal utility, but we use those letters because we use it in math um, along with terms like marginal costs and marginal revenues. Um, so, and other things. So, first of all, we need to define these words. Utility is enjoyment. How much enjoyment do we get from something? Or usage. Um, then this is the, an economic term. And you can always tell when economists are together if you listen to us talk. Because we just start using economic terms with each other. Because everybody knows and we're all nerds and we love to speak, speak our language around others. Uh, just like physics people joke about entropy and stuff and inertia and stuff when they're together <laughs> about things like just getting up and going somewhere or something. So we are in economics when us nerds get together. Um, so utility means enjoyment and it means usage. Okay, Marginal refers to the the next unit. That next unit that's coming at us on the edge um, and the best way to, ex to explain this is to talk about making good and bad decisions. Bad decisions, I'm going to write the word sunk cost down there, are made about things that happened in the past. You don't decide about your major based upon what you've been majoring in in the past. You have to look at the future. Anything that we've expended or spent money on in the past is what we call a sunk cost. It's behind us. You can't change it. It has no impact on the future. It's gone because no matter what decision you make in the future, that one's already been made. So it doesn't affect the... I mean, it's not like, well, if we go left, we don't have the sunk costs, And if we go right, we do. Because if you go left or right in that future decision, you on both cases, you have that sunk cost. It's happened behind you. It can't... It doesn't change anything in the future. It's done. It's sunk. Okay? Now, I know accountants deal with sunk costs all the time because that's their job. They are measuring what happened in the past so that we can look at that 
and decide if a good thing happened in the past or a bad thing, right? I mean, that's what accounting's about, keeping records, and it's a vital thing. It's, you know, they can pay you a lot of money to do that. But if you're making a decision about the future, you have to look at what's coming at you. And this is why studying business is so much more exciting than studying, say, something that's happened in the past. Now, by the way, I am a history buff and political science and history. I love that stuff. You know, if I could have got a job in it, I might have got a Ph.D. in one of the uh, history or political science. I love those things. I'm glad I studied economics instead. But, you know, those are cool subjects. But the thing is, you know, the Battle of Hastings took place in 1066. In sixth grade, I learned that. And since sixth grade, that hasn't changed, right? So the Battle of Hastings, 1066, that's fine. It hasn't changed. What about how we do business? You know, if you leave, if you leave business uh, for a year or two and come back, you don't know how people are doing business anymore because it's, it's changing. The world is coming at us all the time different, and we have to adjust. And, you know, they talk about cutting edge, being on the cutting edge. You have to be, or you're going out of business. And so things are changing. It's dynamic. You've got to know what's going on. Um, if you want to be in business and you're not paying attention to current events and, and current technology changes and all that stuff, if you're not that guru of the future, you're not going to be successful. So, you know, if you're just like comfortably numb in your cocoon and you're, you know, laying back and, you know, you just, you know, I'm just, you know, playing, showing, sending people pictures of kittens on my phone, you know, and you're not going to be successful in business. You've got to be. It's cutting edge. Right. Okay. Now, how, how does this relate to marginal utility? Because, I mean, I'm mentioning it. Is it just because I'm just off topic? No. It's because cutting edge and marginal mean basically the same thing. Marginal means that next unit that's coming at us, that next one, right? How much enjoyment are we going to get? Or marginal cost. How much is that next batch of iPads? Let's say we work for Apple and we're ordering iPads and we realize that there's demand for more at a certain price, right? So that next batch will sell at a certain price that's different from the prices in the past because, you know, the economy's changed. People may pay less or more, or maybe it costs us less to produce or more to produce, right? So we're going to be looking at the, the next, let's say it's next half a million. The next 500,000 iPads that we, have, we order in this next batch, how much is it going to cost us per unit? That's the marginal cost. How much are we going to earn in revenue from selling it, that's the marginal revenue. So that next one is what is how you make decisions. You look at what's coming at you in the future. If you're like, oh, well, you know, 10 years ago, well, we didn't have iPads then. Okay, two years ago, we sold them at such and such. So let's assume that's our price now. Well, that you'd be fired, right? You can't say that to your boss. Well, let's just take what yesterday's price. The boss is going to say, no, no, no. What can we sell it for tomorrow? And if you say, well, you know, costs a year ago were such and such, and transportation costs were such and such. Um, so, um, you know, a year ago, let's just plug that in now. You're fired, right? So, you know, you've got to look at the cost of transportation today. This coming one, you know, we're going to transport these back from China. How much is it going to cost us? How much are the rare metals are going to, the rare earths going to cost us? How much, all these things, the labor, what do they cost us now, the next one, that's marginal, okay? Sometimes we use it in English to talk about your grades. And we say, you know, your grades are marginal. <laughs> it means they're on the edge, right? You're on the edge. So, uh, uh, there you go, marginal utility. Now, we talk about something called diminishing marginal utility. Now, when I did this before, I scared my dogs, and you'll hear it, and I'll tell you if they ran away. Here's the deal. I'm filming this at home. Um, this is 2015 in the spring, so if I, if I show this again next year, uh, you'll probably remember this event, but we, we missed a week of school. Prior to that, I had a week of the flu, so I've been out of school for two weeks, 
So I ran to school uh, uh, to get my iPad so I could film this thing, and it didn't survive a rather scary snow uh, adventure on the way home. So the iPad did not did not survive. I did. Um, and then I had to order one, and because of the delay in the snow, it finally came, and then my pipes busted. <laughs> and so here it is Sunday night before we come back to school, Monday, and I'm finally filming a web day lecture that should have been filmed two weeks ago before I got the flu. So, here it is, and for those of you in another semester, um, that's what's going on. So I'm home. And I decided to film, and then I realized that my dishwasher's making a holy racket. And it doesn't normally, but there's something in there jiggling. So I thought, well, that's going to show up in the back of the background, so I'll go upstairs. There's really not a good, comfortable place up here. I, I'm, I pretty much live downstairs, so i got storage up here. My daughter has a room up here, and, you know, I'm just not going to go hang out on her futon. So I'm sitting at the top of the stairs away from the dishwasher, so be nice and quiet, and I have my dogs at my feet. Yeah, so it's fine. I've got nice carpet here, you know. Got my dogs here. I've got a soda to drink. Mm -hmm. And in the next part, I'm going to use a stern voice. And remember, I filmed this before, right? Well, when I did, I used this stern voice, and then the dogs vanished. <laughs> so be prepared. I'm going to give sound effects here. Okay, back to the lecture. Diminishing marginal utility. Diminishing marginal utility. I'm going to the next I'm going to the next slide to show this to you, but this is one of the key points that we want to make. Basically, the more you consume of something, the less utility each individual marginal unit gives you. So, how do we measure utility? We pretend we can measure something called a util or utils, right? More than one is utils. So, onward. Okay, so... Let's pretend that I'm a nice professor. I'm so nice. I bring in the chefs from the most wonderful burger joint in town. And if it's not in town, then go next door to another town. Yeah. So Union City, okay? And I bring the chefs in, and they're going to make the most wonderful burgers, or chicken, or veggie burgers, or burger steaks. I mean, wheat, gluten, whatever, whatever your problem, whatever your issues, shouldn't say problem. <laughs> Uh, whatever your issues about food, you're going to love whatever it is because this is the place that everybody, you know, waits for weeks to get a re uh, um, to get a, a seat reserved, a reservation. Okay, so I'm bringing them in, and that's supposed to be a horizontal straight line, but it's not. So now we got the quantity and the marginal. <clears throat> Okay, come on, marginal utility that we get from one, two, three, four, five, etc. of consuming something. Now these are great burgers. They are half pound and we're bringing in anything you want to put on it. You want a bacon blue cheeseburger? These chefs have it all. And by the way, I'm going to lock the doors of the classroom because it's a scientific experiment and we don't want people coming in from outside and not having, you know, the same experiences as other people. So I'm locking the doors. we got the chefs here. They've got the, the grill going. Um, we've got to open a window because, you know, we got smoky haze in the classroom. Imagine this, you know. And uh, so, you know, those of you that don't like beef, well, we got chicken. They can do some chicken burgers. And if you don't like meat, well, we can do veggie burgers, you know, with mus uh, mushrooms or something in them. I mean, just, it's just great. I mean, 
the most wonderful buns, you know, go on these things. And if you don't like wheat, well, you know, you can put this on the plate and eat it with a knife and fork without a bun. Whatever it is, you like it. Now, since we don't have a way to measure utils, I'm just going to say that the first one gives you 3,000. And where did I get that number? I made it up. Okay? And that's just to give us a reference. Just like when we were learning supply and demand, and we were talking about, okay, I'm pretending the price is this, and I'm pretending the quantity is this, and now I'm telling you the price changes to this. What happens to the quantity? And then you react and say, well, it goes up or down, right? Um, right, okay. So we're going to do this. We're starting with an arbitrary number of utils. Whatever 3,000 represents, it represents the enjoyment you get from this wonderful, wonderful meal that your wonderful professor was so nice to serve you. And, and actually, you should thank me for the fantasy because you've enjoyed it. Just saying. Now, I'm so wonderful, I'm going to make you eat another one. Okay? So, you're like, but I'm full, it was wonderful. You know, I'm sure there's some people there in the classroom with big appetites that are like, yeah, I can eat another. And then there's other people going, oh my gosh, I couldn't finish the first one. Half a pound of burger just for one person, plus all the fixins to go on top, you know. I mean, if you wanted onion rings on it, you could have onion rings on it. And if you wanted onions or pickles or whatever you want on it, right? <sighs> okay, can't finish it? Too bad. This is science. I'm a scientist. You agreed to the experiment, so eat it. Eat it. Okay, so you eat it, right? So, um, how much enjoyment did you get? Did you enjoy it as much as the first one? See, now it's the science. I want, it, I want you to re refer back. Was that first half pounder as good as the second half pounder? Well, you know, most rational people will say no. You know, this was more like 900. Have you ever done that? Um, I did that just this past a couple months ago. I got a shrimp quesadilla over at the Mexican restaurant just across the street. And uh, oh, the first one was so good, but it didn't come with any sides, no rice or beans. or I mean, it didn't come with any. And uh, so I, I just said, can I have another one of those? And you know what? That second one just wasn't as good. And it was just funny because as an economist, I should have known that. Uh, but the minute I, the minute I got the second one, I thought, oh wow, truth, you know. <laughs> that second one just wasn't as good as the first one, even though they were both kind of small. I mean, first one was yummy, second one just didn't even taste as good, and I'm sure it was exactly the same as the first one. So what I'm saying is, we have something happening here, diminishing. I'm going to run out of space. Can I get it in here? Diminishing. Marginal utility. Okay, we're still filming. I'm checking the marker now to see if it's counting. It's counting. That's good, because last time it stopped counting like 15 minutes ago. Okay. So, your wonderful professor says, Oh, scientific experiment is not over. Eat another one. Eat it. I can't even do it. I did a really good job last time. With, eat it. There go the dogs. <laughs> eat it. Okay, so I'm standing there now, and do doors are locked. You can't get out. What's your marginal utility of a third burger? You know, some people would say, oh, 30, you know, some people would say it's negative. But if I forced you again, I think most of you would agree we're getting into the two, minus 2,000s. And if I forced you to again, hey, you know, sue me. You can't because it's my fantasy and it's, it's not real. But you're being tortured now, hypothetically. What are you going to do about it? Huh? All right. So the fifth one, you know, things are getting nasty in there. we got to open the windows. What do you think? You agree? What happened here? 
The first one we enjoyed very much. The second one, not as much. The next one, not as much. The fourth one, we've gone negative, haven't we? The next one, you know, makes us sick. The, le the le I mean, at this point, you realize you're being tortured. <laughs> oh, I should laugh like a witch at this point. <laughs> or something like that. You're being treated very badly, but it's all hypothetical, right? So, <laughs> so, but did I get my point across? Even something good, just, you know, even the most wonderful thing in the world isn't good if you have to do it forever. I mean, there's things I just don't want to do for 40 hours, even if it was wonderful for a short period of time, right? So, 40 hours. <sighs> All right, you get my picture. Um, no, don't look, don't, don't, don't imagine that picture. You get the message about diminishing marginal utility. At first, you get enjoyment out of it. And this is one of the main points that you have to get out of this lecture that as the quantity increases from one unit to two units to three units, etc., the marginal utility of each one goes down. Does that make sense to you? All right. Well, we're still filming. Then we're going to go to point two. Um, have you ever thought what to do on Friday night with your friends? Right? And you thought, well, you know, we could go to a movie and a nice dinner. Which, by the way, I just ate at that Muntos or whatever that... Uh, the new Italian place over in Union City today, and it was very good. Um, so, movie and a dinner with your friends? Hey, let's go do movie and a dinner. Or, do we want to download something and cook a frozen pizza? Now, we don't make decisions about this sort of thing without prices. Okay? Prices are essential. Prices are a part of the decision. So, we'll look at the marginal utility, but we also will look at the price. So, I'm going to say marginal utility of movie and dinner and price of movie and dinner, MD. Okay? And we're going to compare that with the marginal utility of a download and pizza, okay, divided by the price. Because going out to a movie is fun, right? It's probably funner than sitting home and downloading stuff. So you got a gang, let's say you got a gang of six people, including yourself, right? So the six of you. You can go out to a movie, and then you can go out and have fun at a, at, a, at a restaurant. Or you can download stuff and hang around at the apartment or the dorm, right, you know, um, and uh, sit on dorm furniture and, and uh, you know, microwave some frozen pizzas. Which one's the good one? Somebody tell me this uh, after you've watched it on the video. Email me. And tell me, which one's the good one? Totino's, blah, Totino's or Tony's? Those little frozen dollar pizzas. Which one's the good ones? Because I always get the wrong ones and then I forget. And then my daughter comes home from the dorm so says, is there anything to eat? And I tell her, frozen pizza. And she goes, ew, you got the wrong ones. So tell me and I'll write it down. Or actually, I'll just print out what you said. So email me. Which ones? And so this is the price of downloading pizza. So if we're going to make this decision, let me change the color here just to help us see it. Okay, I'm just going to arbitrarily say that the movie and the dinner are going to give us uh, 35,000 
Nah. How about 3,000? 30. Mm. Yeah, we'll go with 35,000 utils. So our marginal utility is going to be 35,000. We're going out. We haven't been to a movie in ages, and we haven't eaten out in ages. And downloading, well, you know, uh, let's say 1,000, right, or 1K. Let's keep, keep it consistent here. Ooh, okay, 1K. So, 35000 to go out and really just do the town, you know, you go to see that best movie that you, ha you wanted to see, you couldn't wait for it to come out, and you're going to go out to a nice place, and you're going to have fun, and, and uh, right, okay, or we're going to download something, we're going to hang out at the dorm, we're going to have frozen pizza. Now, in the absence of prices, if all we're looking at margin utilities, we'd always go out to eat, and we'd never download things, right? But, hey, there's real life, and real life includes prices. So, how much would it cost us just to go to the movie? So what? Uh, should I say 15, thinking you might get some red vines and a soda, too? And then how much to eat out? Let's say your share is 20. We're not getting too expensive, right? So your share is 20. So what is that, 35? Right? Oh, you know, I've accidentally done this to make this come out exactly the same. So I've got to do this. I've got to make this more expensive. Um, it's an expensive place you're going out, so that's 30. I accidentally had them come out equal, as if you... <laughs> which it could. But I, that's not the point I want to make first. So, and let's change this one to 85. There we go. That will definitely make it obvious what the answer should be. And then we can talk about how that changes later. Okay, so we got 85K and 45 bucks to go out and do the town. And really, if you're doing, that, doing the town, you're probably going to eat at a nice place like, you know, Opera House or, or some place where it's going to cost you more than 20 bucks for your meal and a drink, right? So, so we got, what, 45 is the price, and 85 is the, 85,000 is the utils. And then we got the download frozen pizza, which, okay, you know, and uh, download a movie, right? And, and some frozen pizza. We'll hang out, we'll do this, and we'll enjoy being together. And so that's a thousand utils, right? You know, um, I can give it more if you want. We can, we can make it, you know, 2.1 thousand. But what's our price of the frozen pizza per person? One. What about the downloads? Well, if you download as much as I do, your cost per movie is probably, well, it's not fair. I share my downloads with my family, and I have a daughter who downloads a lot. But my cost per movie is really low. So, you know, it's no more than a dollar. Um for everything, let's say. Or add the price of a download to it, and you got a dollar twenty. Okay? A twenty cent download. I mean if you're thinking about like Netflix, what you pay a month, right? Uh and then divide it by the number of pictures. It's not much. Okay. So what we have here, let's we'll go to a new page. We got what eighty five thousand over forty five and two point one over one point two. I think I can remember that. Eighty five over forty five and 2.1 over 1.2. I don't have my calculator up here, but um, 85 over 45 and 2. Okay, wait a minute. This is 85,000 and this is 2.1, 2,100 over 1.2. So in this case, um, remember these were thousands, right? 2.1 would be 2,100. Okay, so in this case, this is a little less than 2 to 1 on the first one. And 2,100 divided by 1, 1 1.2, um, is going to be a much bigger number. Can you see that? 
I don't have the calculator, but we can look at proportionally. Um, 85,000 divided by 45. You know, I'm going to get the calculator later. I set this up thinking I would make them so they're not exactly equal, but here's the calculator. Back up the stairs. Okay, let's see. This will teach me to just make stuff up instead of writing it out before I do my, you know, writing myself a script. I don't write myself a script. I try and keep it more spontaneous. 85,000 divided by 45 equals 1,888.89. Okay, and we'll compare that with 2,100 divided by 1.2. I think the other one's going to win. <laughs> okay, I got it wrong. This one is actually 1,750. Which one wins? That's 0.89. Okay. So I got that one wrong. I was trying to show you why we do it the other way. But that's because we must really want to see this movie. All right? So when we budget, I'm going to come back to this in a minute, but let's start with the goal. And this one is the other thing that you need to learn, okay? This thing below, and then I'll explain it by returning to what we did at the top. Okay, when you budget, you must take the marginal utility of each item and divide it by its price, and they all have to be equal. And this last one here, I've got N. That's an N over the price of N. Okay, so basically the marginal utility of A divided by the price of A must equal marginal utility of B divided by the price of B must equal the marginal utility of C divided by the price of C, etc., 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 until you reach N, which is the number of total things in your budget. Okay? If you've budgeted correctly. Now, this reminds me of a really hilarious commercial that some of you may not have watched because it was maybe sports. Um, you're not interested in sports. Um, but I'm interested in sports. And there was a commercial. You know how they always have beer commercials on, on a lot of sporting events? Um, and you were younger, too. So 10 years ago, you may not have even been paying attention to the commercials. But this was hilarious. These two college-age guys are buying beer. Or maybe, you know, maybe they're just young 24-year-olds or something. But they're young. They look like kids to me. <laughs> so they're really young. And they are um, they're buying beer and toilet paper. And so they're going up to the cash register, and they don't have enough money for both. And so they look at the beer. They look at the toilet paper. They look at the beer. They look at the toilet paper. They do this for, you know, a little while in the commercial, and then they put the toilet paper away, they buy the beer. And then when the lady has the receipt, they snatch that, that paper from her. It's funny, you know. So they still need a toilet paper. <laughs> they didn't really make an efficient decision, if you think about it. If they were that desperate for paper, um, that they snatched that, they snatched that receipt. We need that too. <laughs> Um, basically, now let's go back up to the top here, okay, and, uh, and let's look at this. If we go to the movie a lot, remember we got marginal utility at the top and price at the bottom, right? And this was the movie thing, and this was the download, remember, whoops, right? This was movie and dinner, and this was download and pizza. Okay, right now, this is the best deal. Because we haven't been to the theater in ages, and this is the movie, we, the big blockbuster we've been waiting to come out. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it has, if it's, uh, I mean, I couldn't, it, no matter what I say, I'm going to be out of dated, so, outdated. So, it's the great movie, the blockbuster you've been waiting for. Um, and the price, um, at the bottom, right, in, in the, uh, 
denominator. So you get, uh, we're going to enjoy this one a lot, but what if we go to the movie all the time? What's going to happen to this one? This is going to go down, right? And what happens if we don't do the download thing for a while in the frozen pizza? The reason it's low, partially, is because we're doing too much of it, right? If we haven't gotten together with our friends and watched a download and ate, ate some pizza, eaten some pizza, um, then maybe this one's going to increase, right? So instead of 2,100, maybe it's going to go up to 8,100. And the other one, we go to the movies all the time, right? I just hate it. There's kids there, you know. There's kids and making noise, and and it's just I just, just hate it. I just hate going there and panel, you know, whatever. Well, what's going on is eventually we reach a point where this one isn't as enjoyable. It may still be better than the downloads. Maybe because it's just intrinsically a little better, but if we do it all the time, we might reach a point where instead of 85,000, this is more like, uh, you know, 10,500, right? Do you see that? Because we did it more, the diminishing marginal utility kicks in. We're doing it all the time. It's just another movie, right? And we always eat at that restaurant, and it's good food, but I'm getting kind of tired of always eating my favorite dish there. Right? So, what happens? These numbers start changing. And we could reach a point where, let me see, 10,500 divided by, I should just keep this calculator with me when I film these. 10,500 divided by 45 now is 2, whoops, 2, Three, three, three. Okay, and eighty-one hundred divided by one point two equals sixty-seven fifty. Okay, so at that point, the prices didn't change. Do you, do you notice that these prices? This one stayed forty-five. This one changed. One, became one point two, but the decision we made changed because the more you consume something the marginal utility falls and you know time can change that I mean you may watch a lot of movies for a while and then not watch any for 10 years and then it's going to reset right it's, the whole thing's going to reboot and we haven't been to a movie in 10 years yeah well then your marginal utility will will sort of reset um and if you don't hang out and download and do that sort of thing with your friends, that gets more marginal utility. And divided by the same price as before, you're going to get a different ratio and you're going to make a different decision. Um, by the way, I didn't, I didn't uh, change that. But you can see it now, right? Wait, I, yeah, I got it. Okay, so what have we got? Um, what can we learn from this? If we were to be in a situation where, and this looks like a test question, I'm not saying it'll be this exact test question, but this is the sort of test question that could come from this. What if we're in a situation where the marginal utility of B, I guess that's B for beer, um, as in the commercial, right, divided by the price of beer, <laughs> in this case, is greater than the marginal utility of A, which maybe in this case would be all other things, okay? What's wrong with our budget? Should we consume more beer to make our budget be more psychologically efficient, you know, to, to make us happy? Or should we consume less beer? Now, according to the theory, we are consuming too much of this one or too little of this one because if we consume less of A, then this one will go up, right? And more of B, then this one will go down. And eventually, I mean, you can drink too much beer. Don't tell me some of you haven't realized this yet. If you haven't, just take our word for it. I know, I've... 
Well, never mind. <laughs> Not only my own experiences, but those of people I know. <laughs> um, anyway, the marginal utility uh, divided by the price will fall if we drink more beer. And if we maybe consume less, what was the commercial toilet paper, right? Um, then, then the value of that will go up. So I, that commercial's right spot on, isn't it? Um, think about it. If they, don't, if they don't buy as much toilet paper, they're going to value it more. And so they're going to grab that receipt. You got the idea? The main idea is if we enjoyed everything, given the amount we paid for everything, about equal, then we're not going to have any psychic discomfort of saying, oh man, you know, I screwed up. I spent all this money on this and I bought, I spent all my money on beer and I have no money for food. You know, obviously that food has a value if you're regretting not having as much. You get it? And you're like, this is so theoretical. This is a bunch of, yeah, you're right. Um, it's theoretical. But what it does is tell us how our mind works. And what we have done is sort of mathematically, theoretically said, this is the way consumers think. And that's the chapter. And when I come to class, I'm going to start us on elasticities. So we're going to do a whole other chapter. And we have just finished everything you need to know about marginal utilities and, and uh, budgeting in your consumer decision making. Everything you need to know for the test is on this video, at least on this chapter, okay? All right. <laughs>